and there's nothing else there. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I actually started my podcast, and I was announcing it, and realized I wasn't transmitting. Um, (laughs) (laughs) It's because I know what the comment is, so... Yeah, I got almost all the way through it, through the introduction. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, seriously? There's your blooper <laughs> for tonight. I got my epic swag on. I'm the boss right now. The coolest tag you'll ever see in town. Look at my helmet and look at my big blue dress. I'll take my shield off. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lion's Pride Tavern, podcast number 47. Sorry for the technical difficulties last week. We will talk about both weekend raids this podcast. And Harjitan is our boss dance. But before all that, let's start off with introductions. I'm your host, Fafford. I play a Dwarven Beastmaster Hunter in the awesome game World of Warcraft. Next up is Joe Bowie. Hi, I'm Joe Bowie. I play a Worgen Frost Mage. And Lorelei. Hello, this is Lorelei. I'm your Night Elf Fury Warrior. Tonight, Donna Bell is still with us. Hi, it's Donna Bell, the Protection Paladin for the week. <laughs> Tappuccino um, apparently wore herself out taking her motorcycle test, so she's sleeping it off. <laughs> But she, she did pass. Yes, she did. And hi, I'm not a pistol. <laughs> a pistol's still on holiday. <laughs> so, Joe Bowie, can you remember back to last weekend before yeah, our technical I think, difficulties? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, uh, basically, what we ended up doing that week um, was we plowed through uh, a lot of the bosses on the first night. I think we got all the way through um, Mistress Sazine and Sisters of the Moon. I think we were sitting on Desolate Host when we finished up uh, for, that week. For Friday? For Friday, yeah. On that week, we, we stopped on Desolate Host, uh, came back and took out the Desolate Host, and then spent the rest of the evening on Maiden of Vigilance, um, which was a pretty, pretty interesting night. Um, it w- we we made some progress. We got fairly close on one of the pulls, I think, uh, uh, f- and then uh, and then we managed to get it down. I think on that week, did we? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I I'm pretty so. sure yeah, we I think did. You got her down on Friday. Yeah, it, we got her down on. Did we get on her down Saturday. on Friday? On, I thought oh, it was well, Saturday. Oh, it was Saturday. I wasn't there Saturday. And that's when you got her down. Yeah, yep. we got we got her down, and then we. Uh, and then we got to Fallen Avatar and, and got to do um, a few pulls on Fallen Avatar. Um, we, didn't, we didn't get Fallen Avatar down. It was a fairly close thing. I think we only did like two pulls, two or three pulls on Fallen Avatar that night. Um, and we got it pretty close, but uh, we just ran out of DPS and people were dying. And, and, and we just ended up uh, losing on that week and, and did not complete Fallen Avatar. Uh, so the following week, we came in and uh, we blasted through the bosses um, as normal that we've gotten through, like Sisters of the Moon, Mistress of Zine, and all them. And we got down Desolate Host, uh, and I think, uh, did, did we get made in a Villagence down on the first night on Friday? I, I can't recall. If, I don't remember. I think if we... we did, because then we worked... Fallen Avatar all the next time, all the next day. Right. Yeah. yeah, we finished. I think we finished Maiden of Vigilance on our last pull of the evening, actually. Uh, it yes. was. Right. It was. Yep. Yep. And then you're right. And then um, then we went on to Fallen Avatar for Saturday night and have our first Fallen Avatar kill. How great is that? Yay! Um, we, we even got a couple of pulls, uh, three pulls, on Kill Jaden. Um, now, mind you, we were getting there really late in the raid. We did a very trunicated explanation of the fight. 
and just sort of jumped in, got our feet wet on Kill Jaden. It was I, I would not call that like a serious progression attempt. It was more of a you know get a taste of it kind of fight. Um, but uh, but it was cool to actually get to kill Jaden and to take some attempts, and really cool to get Fallen Av- Avatar down um, in only our second week attempting Fallen Avatar. Yes, that was amazing. And I do want to say that there was a certain somebody, <coughs> Dorden, that uh, has predicted that uh, we'll take Kill Jaden down this weekend coming up. Oh, really? You, he's yeah, got you a prediction out there? No, I didn't hear his <laughs> yeah, prediction. He did. I can't believe he made that prediction for, for this next week. I mean, that's a that's a really tough fight. <laughs> well, he has confidence, I think is the word for it. That's serious optimism. Um, well, considering you're supposed to get your original tank back, and he hasn't even seen that fight. He hasn't he, nor- seen Maiden or Fallen or, Avatar. Right. He's got two fights that he's like completely unfamiliar with. When he left for for Europe, oh. uh, he was uh, we were on Desolate Host. So, and even now, then, it was just uh, two uh, views of that. Right. Yes. Does anybody else have a prediction for next week? I think by Saturday we'll get there to kill Jaden and have a few attempts, but I'm not positive we're going to get him down yet. Yeah, I'm. I'm with you there, Lorelai. I, I, the Maiden and the Fallen are really tough battles, and yes, we got through them. But we barely got through them. I'm... Yeah, and there's Maiden is actually, or uh, the Fallen Avatar actually is, once you get all the mechanics down, that fight really is very easy. Yeah, I have to agree with that. I think once the mechanics are, are understood and executed properly, that fight's not that hard. I think we're going to get to uh, what would be known as Phase 3. All right, you know, Kill Jaden fight is a three-phase fight plus two intermissions. No, actually, I don't think we're going to get to phase three. I think we're going to get to the second intermission uh, on uh, next week's raid. Uh, that's when things go dark on yeah. that fight. I think, and I think, I think we're going to spend a lot of time working on Kill Jaden. Yep. Yeah, we'll definitely get there, but I don't know if we'll take her down. So we'll see. Hey, uh, you know, if, if Dorden's right, you know, we'll bring him back on the show and let him prance his stuff. Oh yeah, I'll give him all the props in the world for predicting that one because I, I wouldn't put I wouldn't put uh, good gold on that one. <laughs> there's there's one suggestion I have for Kill Jaden, and that's when um, the swirls are coming out, when we have to deal with the big one, is to set up a rotation of people who can take that damage, who have some kind of mitigation that they can use, because. Uh, the rest of us, we can't do that. I, I tried it once to see, and it just one-shot me going in that thing. Yeah, so, it, it's it, supposed to be tanks, though, isn't it? The it well, happens. Can't, tanks can't take it every time because that damage is going to build up. The big circle, um, we use we have a rotation where our mages go in because they can ice block. Um, hunters should our be tank, able to do it. Cause... Our tanks. I wasn't sure about hunters because yeah. I didn't know... With what what it was that they had? They had the um, shell, and and it worked. Okay, I did and, on a little circle, but not a big one. Okay, no, the big ones, the big ones, the heavy hitter though. The little yeah. circles, you you can take it without any cooldowns. Right, yeah, I can go in those. Um, we use paladins because they can throw their shield up, and we don't. Have, I'm trying to think if we have because we very seldom have a rogue, but I think a rogue might be able to go in. Do they have something like that? I'm. Do we have? I don't, a you know, I don't know because we see them so seldom. <laughs> but we've got one in the. Somebody who's running one now in the guild. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to talk to the guildmate who sets up the rotation, and oh, I'm going to ask point. him who we have, and because I'm pretty sure if we can use hunters, we have more than enough people. Yeah. Uh, to to everybody can take one and not worry about taking two because if you take more than two, it's going to tear you up. Yeah. yeah, I know that at least Frost Mages, which we have uh, three of us in yes. the raid, um, there, three, sometimes four, um, depending on who's there and what the, what spec they're in, I think. Um, but uh, we have Cold Snap, so we can we can actually ice block twice 
Mm -hmm. um, so that would be, you know, assuming we have three, that would be six of those that we can handle yeah. um, as mages uh, if we do it right. But that, yeah, that, that fight is so complex, man. <laughs> it is. There's a lot to it. But again, when I think the hardest part is the beginning of the darkness phase. Yeah, that's why because, I think we're yeah, going to die in the darkness. Yeah, you got to find him because he used to be, Kill Jaden used to be, I mean, not Kill Jaden, Illidan used to be in a stationary spot. So you always knew where to run to find him, but now he moves around. Did you know that hunters can put their tracking on humanoid and then <gasps> that it, will sh it will show them where Kill Jaden is yes. and then they can run to him and then they can click the map to make a mm -hmm. marker on the map to show everybody else where to go to. Yep. yep. We usually just have people that cover the ed the people in the back, you know, the range and the healers. They kind of cover those areas right before the darkness. So we always have somebody ping in the map before the rest of us can get there. Oh, yeah, that's, I heard, that's cool. I heard Charity talking about that, that uh, they had, hunters had that ability to see it, but she thought they took it away. So oh, really? Test it. Yeah, because it wasn't supposed to happen that way. Hmm. But that could be because I, I, yeah, I got that data from a video. So, I mean, it could be outdated information. Yeah. yeah. Well, and she was sick, so she couldn't join us. So I was going to ask her then, but uh, she wasn't feeling well, so she didn't make it with us. But uh, yeah, I think we did fantastic. I mean, we're on the last boss uh, for normal. Mm -hmm. uh, people are getting some good gear. I got, I personally got my four piece Tomb of Sargeras set. And then I'm yeah. using two parts of the last one but it's really weird because ask mr robot is saying switch it back to the four piece on the old one and the two piece on a new one i, I don't get that I, I don't think it a little odd right. now see i did some i not this week but the previous week i had my once every two months worth of luck um that was burnt in one raid uh, where I, I got four pieces of tier in one raid, um, and I'm only missing the shoulders from tier 20 now. But uh, so I, I'm actually running the four piece plus the two piece uh, from tier 19, which is from Nighthold. So I've got a two piece set bonus from Nighthold and a four piece set bonus from uh, Tumas Argaris that I'm running right now. But I did um, I did something. I, I was using that new, or well, it's not new add-on, but I was using that add-on uh, sim permut, uh, which I think is short for sim permutation, where I could load in all of my tier pieces and then run that through simulation craft and have it calculate out what the best combination for me was, um, and th that's how I ended up deciding which sets to use. How about Lorelai or uh, Donna? Did you guys get it? Well, last week I had a good week, too. I had actually had two pieces of the tier already, but my legendaries were better, so I was wearing those. And then I just got all the rest of them last week, and I'm like, oh, I didn't even realize it because I'd stuffed them in the bank, not, you know, figuring I wasn't going to get another one for a while. So you have all six now? Yep. Nice. Wow. I'm missing the shoulders still, but I don't care because I'm wearing shoulders from tier 19. Donna, how about you? Uh... Tier pieces? Yeah, I got four. <laughs> nice. For tanking? Yep. Well, aren't Very they cool. universal? Wow. So when she well, switches yeah. to DPS, they'll still work, right? Yeah, they'll they'll still work. It's oh, the okay. same stats and all that fun stuff. Good. But, but yeah, I think I was the first one to get uh, all four pieces. And that's luck I've never had. <laughs> yeah, well, that's pretty pretty nice. You know, although I've heard some lamentations from various classes about the tier 24 set bonuses like they're not totally happy about them especially from druids yeah warriors too it's not it's not you know as good as things used to be in fact some of my trinkets from the last raid are, are better than what's out there now well i tell you i uh i mine was better when i switched over my four piece sargeras and my two piece for the last one from nighthold um i watched my dps go up dramatically that's cool. Yeah, yeah see, I mean, now I was, I, I was down at 11, 12 on the DPS charts, and this last weekend I was right up there in 6 to 8. So Nice. Now, see, I felt like my ma Frost Mage bonus, I mean, it's pretty significant. It's pretty good. Um, but 
it's so behind the scenes that it doesn't feel like I have like a new bonus. I know I have a new bonus and it is helping my DPS, but it doesn't like feel like I have new bonuses because I don't notice them so much. Uh, about the only thing I really notice is uh, that I get to cast more frozen orbs, but it's it just it's I don't know. It, it's just not an in-your-face thing, you know. It's not like I I I don't feel like I'm more powerful. I just am a little bit more powerful. Well, that's probably a good thing because that's that's how they screw it up all the time, is they make you too powerful and then they nerf you. Right. That, well, they nerf me anyway. The bastards. <laughs> oh, I am impressed though. Uh, have you been watching Sixes? His DPS is getting up there. Yeah, yeah well, he's been doing really well. Affliction Warlock is like top tier, man. Is Affliction it right War- now? Yeah, it's it's one of the best DPS uh, specs uh, classes that you can be right now. They are with the right gear. They are top of the charts. Interesting, because they were they, when they got nerfed a while back. They have never made a comeback. Now it's the rogues, I guess, huh? Rogues, rogues are still <laughs> falling behind everybody. Well, let's see here. Right now. Actually, like, uh, if you do, um, like, you know, up there, I I guess there, there's, like, different groups that are, that are seeing different amounts, you know, because there's, like, real DPS amounts uh, versus, you know, your, your realistic, um, you know, versus maximum potential and stuff, and it depends on the number of targets, uh, because some classes will be really, really good at multiple targets, while some will be better at others um and you know like some of the sites like noxic actually puts affliction warlocks really far back and they're putting demonology really uh or not demonology uh, destruction up higher but you know it, it just really depends actually it looks like uh at least on noxic they're saying arms warrior is the go-to spec oddly that's interesting yeah well they got huge buffs in yeah. 725 from what I recall. I've got to finish leveling that weapon up, too. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that kind of annoying? That if you want to switch specs, you got to collect so much? And <laughs> and I just have, I have been not been in any any mood to do that. I just, I have not had any desire to work on it. Yeah, and you know, like, I have, I have two bonuses from getting world quests at this point for artifact power. Um, you know, from, from my champion where I can get up to two extra artifact power tokens for every single world quest I do, even if it's just for gold or some random item that I'm going to disenchant or whatever. And I have... There, it is such a huge amount of artifact power that's required for my weapon that and, and my, my artifact knowledge is stuck at 40 that I have no desire to go collect artifact power anymore. None. I agree with you. I'm the same way. It just comes as it comes. As I go yeah. out and do world quests, or I do raid. my yep yeah, raid, I, that's as they're coming across now. I don't actually yeah, been, go out and look for it. Nope, I've been playing my alts. I've been barely even playing my main when I'm not raiding. You know, yeah. I do. I I log in. I do my emissary quest just for that non-existent chance of a legendary drop from the emissary box. But uh, you know, that's it. I just don't play them. I play my alts. Well, I did the stupid thing again. I was uh, leveling my alt. I was doing my Restro Druid. And I got to that uh, the quest line where it just tells you to go see this guy. But it doesn't give you a quest marker. And I stopped in the middle of it. And I have no idea where I'm at. Right now. <laughs> oh, I no. I hate that. So I've got to go back from the beginning. Yeah, you got to drop it and start over. Yep. Yeah. And, well... You just what you do is you just follow it. You, you know, you just bring it up on Google, and and he'll say go to this guy, and you go to that guy, and if you can't talk to him, go to the next guy that they tell you to. But I was like, I knew I I shouldn't have done it, but I think that's when I hit 110, and uh, I think that's when I said, okay, that's far enough, but you can't progress on your uh, on your class hall any further without doing that. So oh, right. Yeah, to get your bonuses. But you at least so, remember to send over that, that 40 artifact knowledge token, right? 
one. Well, after I did the 20 or the 35 or whatever it was first. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't do it on the next alt. <laughs> so you guys think that they should 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 Blizzard like go back on what they what they chose to do, which is limit artifact knowledge to level 40 and put it back to level 50? I mean, I know this is just like Blizzard is probably not listening, but if they were, what do you? Oh no, they you, listen all the time. Yeah, do you, do you guys think they should? You know, it. It it's six of one half and it is the other. I mean, you go to fifty, then they're just going to make the amount of artifact power higher to accomplish mm. the same thing. They obviously have something they want to accomplish, you know, and they have certain parameters they have set. So it's, you know, it doesn't make any difference whether you go to 50 and then by earning 28 million, that takes you further. Or they set it to 40 and they give you 48 million instead of 28 million. Are you, You're saying you think they'd lower the amounts if yeah. they raised the knowledge? Yeah. See, they, but do. they didn't adjust the amount of percentage you got when they dropped it from 50 to 40. They just capped it at 40. They, did, they left it alone. Now, the thing that concerns me about that is I've been looking at some 7.3 data, and they're showing this like new artifact relic progression thing where we can like of make our artifact relics um, they more powerful somehow, you know, giving them extra abilities or something to that effect. But it, apparently the amount of those that you can do is based off of how many levels of concordance of the Legion Fall that you currently have. So, I mean, when I'm sitting at concordance 8 right now, and I've got to get 4.2 billion to get my next trait, and I'm like, yeah, I just, I can't do it. I mean, I end up doing it through raiding yeah, and eventually. weeks of play, but... But I, but I don't go out and collect all the artifact of power available every day. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, I know they're getting a lot of flack because of it, because it's taking so long. But, yeah. you know, whatever. Well, and, like, level 50 would be in, like, six years, seven years, <laughs> if I played <laughs> all the time and did it every day. You know, you're talking trillions of artifact power for that? Yeah. Yeah, my, my feeling is... What's going to happen with our weapon in the future? Is this weapon going to become obsolete like all the other things that we've had to do? And when I think about how much time we all put in just doing what we're doing now, if in the next expansion this weapon isn't really any good anymore, think of all the time and effort that we've spent on something that's going to be sitting in your bank because you just don't want to destroy it because you spent so much time working on it. Well, yeah, yeah that that's my point is that they're going to do that because this is the way they keep us busy. You know, I mean, it's... But this has been overkill. It really has. Yeah, and well, there's there's the other thing, too, of, like, all the abilities we've come to know and get used to with our classes that, like, that come from our artifact weapon. Are they going to just... I mean, if they get rid of artifact weapons, do they make some of those abilities baseline? You know? Is it one of those things where, I mean, if you think about, like, the lore of our characters, how we've we've saved Azeroth, like, 15 times now, you know, and we've, we've like, defeated these these horrible monsters that are coming to try and take it over, and we've, we've acquired all these strengths and these powers, and then, oh, well, I don't have that weapon anymore, so I just, I can't do, I can't cast my Ebon Bolt anymore because I... You know, whatever. It's just gone. I've forgotten how to do that. Well, it's no different than a James Bond movie. You know, he saves the world umpteen billion times, and now look what they did with him. Now he's all dark, and he's he's not working for MI6. He's rogue, and, you know, they got to... I mean, how many times can he save the damn world? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, 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 I hope they don't get rid of the weapons, because... What's the point of having Ashbringer if I'm going to have to sell it or something? First green item. Next expansion. But, well, that that's my point. <laughs> no, it's I'm Ashbringer. <laughs> <laughs> Although no. I could sell it for 100 gold, I found out. I'd like to see them... I, I Personally, I'd like to see them take it where, you know, they... They expand upon the artifact weapon, 
you know, kind of thing. And they make that kind of like a part of the lore where it's it's something you keep. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I read fantasy novels and, and there are plenty of characters in there who have their their famous weapon, you know, that everybody knows about their flaming sword or their magical staff kind of thing that they keep, you know, and it's not something that they lose as the story progresses. It's something that, that is always with them and grows with the character. And I'm, I'd like to see that continue with, with uh, the next expansion. Yeah. Well, that's kind of how I felt, you know, especially, like I said, Ashbringer is such a big part of the World of Warcraft that it would be a, a shame to just take it out of the story at all. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, I think we should uh, move on to Dancing with the Bosses. So this is a, a series that we kicked back a few uh, podcasts ago where we talk individually about what we do as melee DPS, range DPS, tank and of course tonight we don't have a healer so we won't have that perspective uh and tonight's boss is harjitan and we'll let joe Bowie start it off okay well as arranged um i do this fight uh with the idea that i'm kind of a melee um what i do is i basically i hang out with the tanks for pretty much the whole fight unless i get a um there's a debuff that goes out, which I believe uh, it's uh, it has something to do with drenching waters, but I don't remember what the name of the debuff is that gets on you that creates the drenching waters. Um, but it's basically like a circle that gets on me, and if it gets on me, then I move out to the sides, and I drop it away from the group, and then I move back with the group so that I can help soak the boss damage when uh, the boss starts doing lots of damage and I just try and stick with the tanks and blast away on the boss as, as hard as I can from minimum range. Uh, and, and that's pretty much what I do the whole fight. All right. Straightforward. Yep. Lorelei melee. Yep. We do the exact same thing. We have to make sure that we're standing and stacking to take the damage. Uh, we kill the little Murlocs ads when they come out, we need to get those down quickly. And just know where to move the puddles when we get them and get out of the way of, uh, what do they call it, when he, uh, draw, uh, the draw-in. The draw-in. The draw-in. And just move out of the way when he starts doing that. And that's really all there is to that fight. That's a pretty simple mechanical fight. Yep, it really is. Yeah, uh, it only, only seems to get complicated when people aren't stacked. Because <laughs> you know, so, we start dropping from, from being stacked. Um, from tanking, Tonabel. Well, from tanking point, uh, you're going to share damage with the rest of the raid. So, you, you know, even if they don't want to seem to stack up with you, you got to turn the boss around and force them to take that damage. And uh, you're going to want to taunt at four stacks of jaggled abrasion. Uh, pick up ads as as they come out, it suggested that you could keep them away from DPS, but what we end up doing is cleaving them down. We have the DPS for it. Uh, you could talk with your off tank about positioning, but we find it easier just to go a clockwise position. So when there's drenching <laughs> waters on the uh, ground, you can just move clockwise to make sure that nobody's standing in it. Yep. Yeah, I have to agree. This is pretty much a, a tank and spank fight. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, and this is, we're normal we're talking about. We're not talking about heroic yet. Um, we'll get there as soon as we get kill Jaden down. But, uh, yeah, it's a pretty straightforward fight. Nothing, I mean, it looks kind of cool because you got murlocs running around and, you know, you got this stuff on the ground, but it's, yeah, there's nothing dramatic about it. All right. So that was quick, easy, and simple. I think healing's <laughs> the same way. Uh, you know, if I can interject there, um, I could talk like tap, but I don't have any Tweety Birds in the background. I think it's pretty much the same. She just stays in the center of the group and heals. I think they have a rotation for their their big cooldowns. Uh, 
But now we don't have any uh, interrupts we have to take care of on this fight, do we? No, nope. not really. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty much it, guys. That's that's all there is to it. So, I will say it's it's really nice when we have the DK tank that can, like, pull all the ads into the middle. Uh, it makes them easier to cleave. That is handy. But Yes. That's very much so. So before I forget, I wanted to put out to our fans, um, if you guys want to give us uh, any indication on Kill Jaden, <laughs> since that's our progression boss, of uh, what you heard tonight, whether it... Uh, we're doing it right or doing it wrong, or if you got some uh, uh, input, by all means, get a hold of us. Uh, we have a Facebook page uh, that you can get a hold of us at. There's a contact on there. Or you can just leave us, you know, a, a uh, comment there too. Um, and that's at uh, facebook.com slash Lions Pride Tavern. You can also go to uh, potomatic.com. Uh, slash Lions Pride Tavern. That's where we're actually hosted. And you can leave a comment there. Um, or you can contact me directly at Lions Pride Tavern at uh, yahoo.com. And you spell it all out. So um, we did get a comment this week, guys. Uh, well, it was actually for last week's podcast, but uh, it was from Riven. And uh, he stated that he listened to our podcast after following the Goblin Goldcast for a while. And he must have heard me on there or them talk about us and we're talking about them. Uh, that he really enjoyed the content, but he had one comment. And it didn't have anything to do with you guys. It had to do with my, my editing abilities. So, Aww. Uh, yeah. Uh -oh. Well, no, it's good, though. It's a, Yay. And I, love, I love comments like this because I... When I edit it, when I put the music in, I don't listen to the music. I just insert it into the podcast, and then I continue on with the podcast. Um, and apparently the music was quite loud compared to us. So uh -huh. I have lowered those volume levels. Thank you, Riven. I really appreciate that. Um, so hopefully, if you would listen again, <laughs> I know, it, it gets one more, you know, we're going to keep one more fan. Uh, <laughs> but if you listen again and let me know, uh, you can leave it in the same comment or you go to our Facebook page either way uh, and just let me know whether it's better this week. I, uh, I did a lot of, of uh, other songs and this is all, these are all songs from Charm is what he's talking about. Um, but they were higher level. I do admit that. Um, but I really like the song. Uh, I kissed an orc. So I may leave that one a little loud. Yeah. I like that one too. <laughs> I just but, think it's so funny. I watched the video. She's got it out on YouTube, and it's got all the words. And you just look at the looking at the words. It's like she did an amazing job. You know, she's talking about uh, the lipstick from the Torrens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the know, Mulgore I, chapstick. The Mulgore chapstick. Yes. You know, I gotta say, I totally agree with with uh, Ribbon there about about volume levels. So because you know. If you've ever watched like a TV show, and your TV show, the volume is normal, you're hanging out, you're watching your show, and then a commercial comes on, and it's all of a sudden yelling at you about something, you're like, whoa, what's with the volume, man? You know, and, you know, like the, the volume, if it's not equalized, it can, it can be uh, a bit annoying. It's even worse with surround sound. <laughs> hmm, yep. <laughs> I, I, it was funny, uh, Durag came into the living room one day, and I was watching some war movie, and he's like, he kept looking over his shoulder, he kept turning around, I was like, what are you doing? He goes, what could have swore there was a helicopter behind me? <laughs> 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 that was all the comments we had, so we don't have anything, uh, not, nothing real big. Um, I mean, there was comments in our raid group about, oh, I was trying to listen to last week's podcast, all I got was, eh, there's technical difficulties. <laughs> uh, we're sorry. It happens. it happens, guys. It really does. So, I mean, it was a combination. My headset blew out. I had lost internet, and there was just nothing. My wife goes, well, can you use your cell phone as a active Wi-Fi spot? And I was like, oh, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> 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 That'd be one expensive podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and we live literally uh, a quarter of a mile from a cell phone tower. So there's times, and it's just, it's amazing. I live that close to a cell phone tower, but yet 
I will drop more calls at home than I will anywhere else in the valley. Hmm. I think I'm just right underneath of it. It doesn't quite get the sir. I don't know. I don't know. It amazes me. Hmm. So let's uh, let's cue the music for Lorelai's Pet Battle Minute. Hi. This week, I want to tell you about a cool website that Tensoon told me about to help you get hard-to-find pets from the auction house, and it's called Zufu's Pet Battle Strategies, XU-FU. I don't even want to know if that's what he meant by that. This is a good site for looking for pets for different battles and achievements such as family-friendly, but it can also help you navigate the auction house. You log into the website and look for the tools at the top of the page, and at the drop-down window, click on Magpie. And Pet Magpie is a search tool for WoW's auction house targeted at pet collection. You'll be asked to choose your region, realm, and one of your tunes. Sit back and Magpie will search your auction house and post any pets for sale that you don't have in your collection. You'll also see the bid and buyout prices. And if you're like me, you have tunes on multiple servers, and this is where Magpie really shines. Exit out of your current tune and put in an alt from another region and compare prices for the same pets. For example, on Yashira, Blight Breath was going for a buyout on 300 gold, but on Trollbane, it was listed for over 1300 gold. At that price, I was able to find two other pets for under 1300 gold that I could get on Yashira. So check this site out if you're looking for pets that you don't have and you don't want to farm. And recently, I've been asked about good battle teams for the Pandarian tournament, the Celestial tournament. Um, so I've made up some teams that I had because I lost all of them in my uh, pet battle teams. But I've gone back and I need to work on one that has changed since the pet, pet battle attacks have changed. So I'm trying to find a good place to put these teams out. I don't know if people want me to do one group on the podcast or put them on our Facebook page. So if you let me know how you want me to do that, I will uh, shoot those pet teams out so that you can finish up your celestial tournament. Awesome. You know what? I just got a picture of, of uh, 5,000 of our fans just went and put built one tune on every server. <laughs> uh, you know that it was amazing. I, I'm just in love with this, this pet magpie because I did it on three different, cause I've got like four or five different servers, but most of them don't have enough money to buy pets. So, uh, and the prices for the same pets were really crazy. So find the lowest one. I mean, finding a pet for 300 gold that you have to go farm, that is a bargain and you need to buy it when you can. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a heck of a deal. All right. Next up. Getting Deeps with Joe Bowie. This week's Getting Deeps revisits a topic I've covered in the past. What are you waiting for? All have big damage abilities, so use them. 99 times out of 100, your DPS is going to be better if you're using abilities as soon as they come off cooldown. So why hold on to them? The answer is, you probably shouldn't. You should probably be using them as early and as often as possible during the fight. Let's say the fight lasts about 6 minutes. Your big DPS damage ability does about 2 million damage and has a 45 second cooldown. That means that over the course of the fight, you can use that ability 8 times at maximum, netting you about 16 million damage overall. Let's say you use it at the opening of the fight. But when it comes off cooldown, you wait to use it. If you wait 15 seconds each time it comes off cooldown, you'll only be able to use that ability 6 times during the fight, losing 4 million damage. If you wait 30 seconds between each use, you'll end up using, losing 6 million damage. If you wait 45 seconds, it'll cost you 8 million damage over the course of the fight. That's half the total potential of that ability lost for no other reason than you were waiting to use it which is an enormous amount of wasted DPS potential. And that's just for one ability. If you're holding off on two or three abilities, you're losing even more DPS. Now, are there times when holding off on an ability is a good thing? Sure. Mechanics in a fight might require some strong burst damage at a certain point, but those instances rarely require players to hold on to their big damage abilities. 
Most of the time, just executing your normal DPS rotation will do the job just fine. So don't wait. Give it all you've got. Mash those buttons as your abilities are coming off cooldown. And keep getting those deeps. Awesome. Yeah, I wanted to interject there because on, uh, uh, what is it, the uh, Maiden fight, I was holding off on my big abilities until her shield went up. And I found that after, you know, I don't know, we, we wiped three or four times. After about the second one, I was like, you know, I'm going to try it. I'm going to I'm gonna mash it all right at the beginning when we heroed and see if it comes back up. And my cooldowns wear off by the time the shield came up, and it did. So, yeah, you know, you got you, you got to play with it a little bit out there, guys. And not just that, but I mean, in that particular fight, it's more important that you're doing big damage to the fallen avatar himself. And as long as the whole group is turning and focusing on that maiden of virtue that's that's there, then we'll we'll defeat that. As long as everybody's doing their fair share and they're doing their normal rotation on that, it'll it'll take care of that shield at five percent of its health. But the the key on that fight is is knocking down the fallen avatar as much as you can before we run out of maiden of virtue. You know, so yeah, man, use those yeah. buttons. Bash those buttons. All right, next up. What's wrong with tanking? What's wrong with tanking? What's wrong with tanking in a dress? What's wrong with tanking? What's wrong with tanking? What's wrong with tanking in a dress? Hello, this is Lorelai. I don't live here, so if you were trying to call me, you've dialed the wrong number. On the other hand, if you were trying to reach Epistle, please leave your name and number at the tone, and he will call you soon. If you leave a sexy message, he'll call you even sooner. Have a nice day. <laughs> I love it. That's great. And then there's... Yeah, this is Tap, and I'm uh, too tired to be here tonight. I was riding my motorcycle. Boom, boom. <laughs> Tap became Southern. <laughs> she didn't want a pickle. She just wanted to ride her motorcycle. She didn't oh. want a tickle. She just wanted to ride her motorcycle. She didn't want to die, so she just wanted to ride her motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. Dut, 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 dut. It is WFN News, Warcraft Fafford News. The Mage Tower is up on the Broken Shores this week, and it has Fell Treasures and Light as a Feather, which will give you the ability to water walk while mounted. But you have to go to Commander Chambers to get it. The weekly quest is Time Walking Lich King. Yay, back to Ooh, Lich King. Nice. Mm. My daughter will love it. So, yeah, so mommy, why she was down uh, with her grandma for two weeks, my daughter, and while she was down there, my wife decided to get her tune boosted, oh, not boosted, she leveled it to 110, because she wants to come raid with us, but uh, uh, she loves the Lich King, so I, I guarantee you she's going to be in the weekly quest this whole next week doing Lich King. <laughs> And uh, last thing for the news, because there's not much going on in the world. Uh, WoW tokens are 130k in the states, so they did go up 5k towards the end of the month, and that could be a good indication that everybody's got to re-up their uh, their subscriptions. So it might be better to wait for mid-month when the price comes down a little bit. That's what the trend I've been seeing, anyway. Unless you're selling, in which case now's a good time. <laughs> exactly hmm. right. <laughs> Unless you're selling. Draenor fish are selling really well on the auction house this week. I made a killing on those. Oh, I tell you, that uh, trade skill master, oh, I love that thing. I love it it's more every day. so much money. I am literally, I started, I think I had like 280000 when I started. Overall gold with every one of my tunes. And I'm up at eight. Hundred and seventy thousand already. Oh wow, you're you're yeah. you've climbed way beyond me now. Yeah. I'm still sitting I have... at like six hundred thousand. 
Yeah, I've got 592,000 on the tunes on Yasira. Very cool. It does. And, you know, and I, I, I hate bringing up their name again, but the Goblin Gold cast is the one that did it to me. So Dex and Mac. Oh, speaking of uh, Mac, Mrs. Mac came and joined us this last weekend for raids. She did. And she actually out-survived Mac one fight. <laughs> she did, yeah. <laughs> she made sure everybody knew that. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it's great. Um, Dex is actually uh, heading off. He's doing an Alaska cruise, so he's going to be gone for a couple weeks. So uh, I think he stopped leveling his hunter. It's uh, He got it all the way up to, I think, 101. Mm, he's 103, <laughs> no, he's like, 104, yeah, he's like 100, something like that. Yeah. I know. But I know he's going to listen to our podcast and be like, <laughs> I'm further along than that. <laughs> But uh, I'm sure he will uh, pay for the uh, airtime to be able to listen to our podcast on the ship and to watch our uh, our live stream that we have on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> it's only like eight bucks a minute. Right, yeah. Oh, uh, it was so expensive when we went on ours. It was insane. Yeah, I heard there was, I remember something about, I remember something about that. There was a guy who had like auto updates on his phone yeah. set up or something and he got a bill for like thousands of dollars from going yeah. on a cruise. Yeah. Well, now here's what's really cool. They have an internal network. So if you do take your cell phones, um you can text each other on the ship. But it doesn't go out on cellular data. It stays in the in network. So well, that's, that's pretty cool. Well, I, my wife and I used it all the time because I would always go with my daughter to go do something and they would go do something else. And then we'd be like, oh, what time do you want to meet up for lunch? You know? <laughs> so, cause it's a big ship. <laughs> you just can't run into somebody, you know? Uh, I don't know how many times I got lost. Anyway, guys, um, I think that's about going to wrap it up for this week. I want to thank, uh, Charm for all of her beautiful music. That's, uh, that we use and make sure you guys go visit her website and her YouTube channel. The links are in the description um, on our YouTube channel and uh, in our links on Podomatic. Uh, there's also Joe Bowie's uh, email address and uh, Tappuccino's email address. If you got specific stuff you want to ask them, uh, they'll definitely answer it on the air. Don't hesitate. Uh, but yeah, fans, thanks for listening. We do this all because you guys are listening. So please give us feedback. Let us know how you feel. Riven, thank you very much for letting us know about that, that uh, volume phase that we had going on there. Because uh, I, I work at a hotel, and I know that when people come and stay in my rooms, um, out of 10 people that stay in the room, one person will say that something's wrong. The other nine don't say anything because they don't want to be a bother. Please bother us. Let us know. Yep. Panel, thanks thanks for coming, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Have All a good right. weekend. Thanks for having me. See ya. Yeah, no, we'll have to uh, we'll have to see if we're going to let a pistol back in there, Donna. We may <laughs> just have you, uh, you know, stay with us. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm sure he's itching to get in here and say something about where he's been overseas. I think he's in France tonight. Yep, he is. All right. Night, everybody. Good night. Have a good night. Bonjour. If you like this podcast, throw us a like and subscribe to our channel. And please, leave comments or questions below. 
Maybe we'll answer them on the air next podcast. We are hosted on Potomatic.com. Our website is lionspridetavern.potomatic.com. Our podcast also airs on iTunes for Apple users, Google Play for Androids, and YouTube. Just search World of Warcraft Lions Pride Tavern podcast. See you next week, and thanks for listening.